Okay, so that's kind of entertaining, amusing-ish, sort of. But what if I wanted a photograph in that shape? Or let's say I'm doing a little promotional piece and I wanna have four photographs that I can really quickly swap out. Let's say I wanna promote myself to a food company. Oh, I can do food photography. I wanna be able to throw some food pictures in there. And then I wanna promote myself for wedding stuff. I can throw some wedding pictures in there. If they're just rectangles, that would be pretty straightforward. Just crop it down to whatever size it is and drop them in. But what if it was a different shape? Like what if that was the shape that my photograph had to take? I mean, that's kind of a weird shape to crop a photo to, but it could totally be done. Watch this. Let's say I went into this clipping masks image and I grab this photograph and I say, yes, this is the photo I want. And I want it to be the same shape as the other one there. Well, if I send this over to that other document, my, what was the untitled two, I think? Two, there she is, all right. So she's sitting over top of that shape there. What do you think would happen if I clipped her to that shape? She would be visible through the shape. We've looked at clipping before. Like let's say I did an adjustment layer and I use this to darken the image down. Oh no, it's affecting all the layers. If I wanted to only affect her, I could clip it to the layer below. And there's a bunch of ways to clip. I could right click and choose create clipping mask and it jumps to the right a few pixels and it's only affecting her. So when you clip something, it only affects the layer directly below. So if I were to clip her to the shape, boink, she's visible only where the shape is. So she's visible wherever this shape exists. Now this, okay, limited utility, I will totally admit that. But let's say I was doing a promotional piece where I wanted to, well, let's start with this thing here. And I said, I want a picture to be, you know, over here, like that big. I could totally bring her in this way and I could drag her in or copy her in or however, I could scale her down put it in that part of the image there. And then if I wanted, you know, four more, you know, or three more, I could bring another image in. How would I know that I get it the exact same size? Or how would I know that it's in the exact right position? Or maybe I have like a layer style that I've added to it. Maybe I did like um, a drop shadow for it. So it looks like it's just levitating there. Or because it's leather, I want it to look like it's, you know, imprinted into the leather. So I gave it a, a pillow emboss, something like that. Hey, it's printed right into the leather there. If I wanted to swap that image out, I'd have to get rid of this image, bring another one in, make sure it's exactly the same size, apply the same layer style, the same bevel and emboss and stuff to it. That could be a bit of a pain in the patoot, wouldn't it? Although, what if I brought in, it's a word, what if I brought in another image, like this one here, and I threw that right over top of her? What do you think would happen if I clipped this to her? Boink! <gasps> She's only visible where this layer exists. And if I were to scale this one back down, that makes it really easy to update these photos. Now, in this case, I've used a photo as the background here, but it doesn't have to be a photo. Let's say I did a, a shape layer. If you hit U on the keyboard, it'll take you to where your live shapes hang out. And let's say I wanted, instead of a regular rectangle, I wanted it to be a rounded rectangle. So if I go to my little rounded rectangle tool here, and I do a click and a drag, it'll make a box. And it doesn't matter what I fill this box with, because ultimately it's gonna be whatever my photo is visible in it. And then I gave this whatever layer style I wanted. So I threw on maybe the, the bevel and emboss on there. Once that looks good, I could, well, I could duplicate it and I could throw one over here. I could duplicate both of these. If I select both of these layers, drag them onto the new layer icon, it makes another copy, and I could put two down there. And then when I'm ready to put a photo in, I just call in whatever picture, so I'll duplicate her over to the leather, and I'll clip her, boing, to one of those layers. Give it a resize. And there we go. I don't have to worry about trying to crop this image down to the right size, get the right radius on the rounded corners, get the layer mask or layer style applied to it. I just drop her in. I can move it around because all that background information is still there so I can kind of recompose the crop afterwards. It makes it surprisingly versatile. And then I could throw on some text. Uh, and here's a little mock-up that I whipped together. 
So you can end up with something like this that's really easily updatable. I've got an image clip to this square, an image clip to this square. Each of these has that pillow emboss around the outside. I could do a drop shadow if I wanted. So let's say you're doing like wedding stuff and baby portraits. So you do one up with baby portraits and the photo in the background is like, you know, nice soft satin stuff and babies and all cuteness. And it says like, you know, baby photography and all your contact information. And you got your logo somewhere. And then you, oh, I want to promote my wedding photography stuff too. Throw out the babies, bring in the wedding stuff. Clip. Oh, okay, it sounded bad when I said it. But anyway, throw in the wedding stuff and print up another hundred copies and mail those out to your wedding clients. So it's really easy to update. And with those layers, with those rectangles and stuff, as long as you've still got it as a live shape, so I take the pen tool here and I select this rectangle and I'm like, it's nice, but I think maybe it's a little too big on the radius there. I could use the pen tool to edit it, although, watch this, as soon as I try to edit it, it says, whoa, this operation will turn a live shape into a regular path. Do you want to continue? I'm gonna say no, because as long as it's a live shape, I can pop into my properties panel and I can play around with some of the properties like the radius on the corner. Right now, all the corners are linked. So they all have a 49 pixel radius. I could make that radius smaller. I could make that radius larger, turn it into a pill shape if I wanted to. As long as it's still a live shape, we can make it whatever we want. So it keeps things surprisingly versatile. And it doesn't have to be a live shape. It could be something as simple as an oval, a circle, that little weird shape that I made in the beginning there. Let's get you guys started on your lab for today. I'll show you some of the stuff that people came up with in the past. These are some examples that I found on the internet before uh, I gave this to the class for the first time. And like I said, it doesn't have to be, you know, a rectangle, a circle, whatever. Here's an example where it has a bit of a distressed pattern to it. If you clip an image to a layer that has transparent areas in it, the image will become transparent. So you've got a little bit of a distressed layer, it picks up the same distress. And again, fairly easy to update. Nice clean layout, fairly simple background. A Little bit of a more random kind of pattern in the background, but again, still nice and simple, a little bit of a vignette around the outside. And if they wanted to turn this into like a really easy wedding thing, they could make the background white, get rid of that postcard kind of feel, and you got a nice clean white background. You can do black background. There's a white background with a bit of a rounded corner, rounded edges. More of a random sort of look. Notice a little bit of a drop shadow on this one here. Gives it a little bit of a three-dimensional sort of feel. Now the next three, this one, this one, and this one, same basic template. Again, really easy to update those photos. So there's the business portraits. There's the guy portraits. There's the women portraits. Really easy to send out three different mailers at the same time. And if you do it in layer groups, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, you can just turn layers on and off all within the same document. Clean white background, just rectangles. Black background. And this is for makeup and stuff. You can see there's the powdered makeup in the background there. You could really easily throw in a meadow, a forest, and suddenly you've got all your landscape photos, your nature stuff, all on the same template. So pretty easy to throw together. I'll show you some examples again of what students have done in the past. No, those were uh, ones I grabbed off the interwebs, but these are ones that students threw together. So this was Ingrid's, and, and you'll notice in this case, she's got two different layer sets. So the top one here is the commercial. If you turn this off, there's the portrait. Commercial, portrait. And if you look into the folder, say for the portrait here, there's all her type, the words. So that's fairly easy to edit. There's the picture that's clipped to that layer. If you move the picture around, you can resize, recompose as you need. Here's another one. And in this case, they've actually got their logo on a separate layer. So if they wanted to play around with different contact information, so instead of wedding photography, you can do your baby photography. So there's her wedding ones, there's her babies. Change the background color as well. Now it's on a nice beige background. There it's on a white background. Just two different folders. There's all the layers in there, clipped to it. Kind of a decorative background on there. Easy to turn off, turn it into a white background, whatever you want. There's the portrait photography. There's the couple's photography. There's all the layers. Here's band portraiture. And self-portraiture, apparently. With the horrible slogan, I'll shoot you. Anyway, um, yeah, what are you going to do? Um, now you'll notice he's got a drop shadow applied to the words here. My version of Photoshop, I think I need to update it because it is rendering. If I zoom in here, look at the drop shadow. It's actually fine. 
It's when I zoom out that it renders the drop shadow incorrectly. It's having trouble with layer styles. So sometimes when things go weird and you can't find any solution, sometimes it's just a Photoshop thing and I should probably update my version of Photoshop. I'm guessing, look at that, there's an update button. I should probably do that someday. Um, but yeah, watch out for stuff like that. But that, you know, fairly simple. Again, there's musicians, himself. Here's again, nice, clean, simple. There's not a whole lot to it. And I guess she really likes cakes as well, because cakes. So easy to update. I'm going to show you guys using the um, groups here, how easy it is to make a whole other set within the same document. I mean, you could save up multiple documents as well, but if you do it in one document, you just go to your promo thing, call it this up, print, turn this off, hit print, do 50 of each, send them out to different clients. Really easy, really straightforward. Now, the groups that they had in there, let me just quickly show you what that's all about. So let's say here's my layout and I've got all my photos in here and I want all of these, the pictures and the little things here, to be updatable. If I just make a copy of everything, so if I select this top layer here, which is that, actually, ironically the one on the bottom there, and then I scroll down to just above these image layers and actually I'll leave the type out of it, the, uh, the type and the phone number because that's going to be the same for all of them. If I hold the shift key, I can select all of these layers up here and if I just right click on any of the names, I can choose group from layers. So it'll make a new group from these layers that I have selected. And I'll call this bridal. Hit OK, and there's my bridal folder. Now, if I just duplicate this folder, I can turn off the eyeball on my bridal one. This one could be, you know, some other thing. Turn this off, turn this off, throw on different photos. And then when I'm ready to print, I can print this one here with whatever photos are in there. When I'm ready to print the bridal stuff, turn on the bridal, print that out. You can have you know, all kinds of different variations in the same document. Again, I could have saved it while it was just the bridal one and they were all right in the layers there, saved it as bridal and then throw new photos in and saved it again, file save as, you know, wedding, baby portraits, whatever. It just means you'd have multiple PSD files on your computer. With this, they're all in the same PSD file. There's my promo stuff, double click, there's all my things, swap in some new photos, file, print, out it goes, everything's set up, okay? If you want to apply a layer style, like here I wanted that, you know, bevel and emboss sort of feel to it, you don't apply that to the photo. There she is, kind of sitting over top of it. You'll notice that the layer style is applied to the rectangle. And then when you clip her, there she is, unclipped. When you clip her to that shape, she picks up whatever layer style it had in addition to the shape of the shape. So. Following the example of those students from the past, come up with your own layout. Think about things like composition. How do you want it to look? Do you want it to have a clean background? Do you want some kind of a background photo? Um, if you've got some of your own images, use those. You can play around with some of the images that are in there. It's just an exercise for making something. So if you need to, you can Google around and find some images. You know what I probably should have done before I scaled those images down? I should have converted them to smart objects. So when you drag a photo and you throw it over top, right click on its name and choose convert to smart object. That gives you the ability, if you scale it down so it just fits inside the square there and then later you're like, you know what, it would be nice if I zoomed in on the, you know, the face section. You can still scale it back up without losing any quality. Let's say I wanted to uh, put this photo onto this rectangle over here and resize it. First off, let me figure out where that rectangle is. There it is there. And I will clip it to said rectangle, and I'm going to convert it to a smart object, and when I'm ready to scale it down, when I do a command T here, normally we grab a corner, and we start shrinking it down, and then we have to go to the other corner. Here's a little tip, watch this. If I hold the option key, when I start to shrink, it goes right down towards the center there, or well, it goes towards wherever this little point is. And if that little point isn't visible, this is the center of rotation. If that point isn't visible, this little checkbox up here will turn it on, and then you can shrink it right down towards that point. 